Shalom, my friends. Welcome to this week's word study. Today we're going to uh, do something a little different. We're going to be looking at Matith Yahu, and it's Matthew chapter 24. And today we're going to walk through verses 3 through 14. Continuing down our rabbit trail. <laughs> We started out some three weeks ago talking about the great sign of Revelation 12 and the fact that Yahweh, our Elohim, made that announcement as of September 23rd, 2017, last month. And now, at this point in time, we know that the event itself was an announcement. And we moved on to the focus of doing as Yeshua commanded, to watch. That was the focus of our study two weeks ago. And then last week, we looked at what Yahweh's word tells us about the duties and activities of a watchman. That is what it means to be a tzafa. And we also looked at what it means to be a prophet. That is a navi. And we recalled our studies in 1 Corinthians, teaching us that we are all to desire the gift of prophecy, that is, the gift of nevuah, and that this gift, this matan of nevuah, is not what most people think. (laughs) It's very simply, Chavarim, a matter of interpreting the word of Yahweh through inspired teaching. That means... And, you know, we've been encouraged. Shaul said, you know, most of all, I wish that you would navu prophesy. Well, anyone who is talking to another person from their heart about their love for the word of Yahweh and sharing his word, they are at that moment a Navi, a prophet. Today, Chavarim, I'm going to do something I've never really done before, and that is a sort of free-form study. (laughs) We're going to walk through chapter 24 in the book of Matthew, where Yeshua tells us what we are to be watching for. But before we begin, of course, let's pitch our tents with our beloved Elohim. Let's bow our hearts. O oh, Abba, Father, Yahweh, we come before you, Abba, to worship you, to praise you, and to thank you, Father, for the mighty work you are doing in each one of us this day. We praise you and we thank you, Father, for opening our eyes, our ears, and our hearts, causing us to see, to hear, and to understand the greater depths and mysteries of your intended understanding of your word. As we give this day, Father, and every day to you, your beloved Yahid, Yeshua, our Adon, and your indwelling Ruach HaKodesh, as we pray in Yeshua's Kodesh name, Yahuwah, Yahuwah, our Elohim, Yahuwah, Echad. And all the Kodeshim said, (laughs) Amen. To remember where we left off together last week, our primary focus at this present time, after seeing the great sign of Revelation 12 announced, is to be watchmen. And as I pointed out in last Saturday's Walk in the Word, We want to be sure that we are not focusing too much attention on the things of the world, where we can very easily wind up being lulled into falling asleep. In Revelation chapter 3, verse 3, the book of Chazon, Yeshua tells us, If you do not stay awake, if you do not watch as I instructed you to do, If I find you asleep when I return, I will come as a thief, and you will not know the hour in which I come. So, we know that we are to 
tzfa. We are to watch, and that we are to be doing so in the ruach, in the spirit, not in the flesh. But what exactly is it that we are to be watching for? Well, first, we'll be watching for announcements from the watchmen we are seeking and finding on the web. And I'll be sharing such information every week in my videos on Vimeo and YouTube for that. And next, we want to be very careful about anyone who claims to own some special gift of Elohim. Someone claiming to have some special anointing that places them above others. <laughs> in Matthew chapter 24, we see, in effect, Yeshua's Talmudim asking him, What are we to be watching for, Adon? And Yeshua answers them saying, Tzafa, watch that no one deceives you because many will come in my name claiming, we got to watch this little part here, I am Hamashiach and they will deceive many. Have you ever wondered about that verse? I have. I mean, there's only one guy in my lifetime who I ever heard claim to actually be the Messiah. I remember but some 10 years ago, 15, there was some dude calling himself Maitreya and saying he was the Messiah. But Yeshua said there would be many doing this, and I've never seen many doing that. There's only one I can think of in my lifetime. And it has nothing to do with that guy, but you can buy Maitreya statues on Amazon. And I don't understand because you'll see statues of Buddha as well. And they call those Buddha Maitreya. I don't know what this Maitreya thing is. And I really don't care and I don't encourage you to look into it. Just saying. And there are other references to Maitreya being the Muslim Mahdi. Satan certainly is the author of confusion, Chavarim. Let's look at this verse again. Yeshua said, many will come in my name. That part's easy. Because there have been very many who have come in Yeshua's name, right? Be it in the name of Jesus or, or Yeshua, more appropriately. Or since in the Eastern mindset, in the name of also means in the character of then that could mean someone uh, imitating Yeshua's character or his nature sincerely or insincerely. But here's the part I find curious. He added that they would be claiming that, in the quote we get in English, this is where it gets tricky, quote is, I am Hamashiach. Knowing how terribly inaccurate many verses in Yahweh's word can be in the English, I just can't help but wonder. I mean, it's very possible that Yahweh's original Aramaic here, which is, it's difficult to look into the Aramaic. So I just do my best without doing so. But that Yahweh's original Aramaic might say something more like, many would come in my name, claiming to be anointed. Now that fits because, whew, man, we've all seen many claiming to be anointed by Elohim, shouting things like, Jehovah God says, or thus saith the Lord. Now that's something we've all seen going on all over the place. Yes? I think he's talking about that as well because... Those kinds of people have, they sure have deceived many as well. And as I've said before, if you ever want to validate any person who claims to be anointed, just ask yourself, who are they lifting up? Are they lifting up Elohim or themselves? If they're pointing at themselves and making themselves to be something special as compared to other people, especially if they're asking you to put your faith in them, 
then Safa. Watch, they are one of those Yeshua is warning us about. Next, back to Matthew chapter 24, Yeshua tells us that we will hear of wars and rumors of wars and that we are not to allow that to trouble us. That nation will rise against nation and kingdom will rise against kingdom, meaning that groups of nations will rise against groups of nations. And we've been seeing that every week in my Tuesday newscast as we watch what's been going on, especially in Syria. And there will be famines and earthquakes all over the place. All these, that is to say, Chavarim, when all these things are happening together in concert all these happening at the same time. You know, there's always been earthquakes. There's always been famines. There's always been wars. There's always been rumors of wars. But never all at the same time like we're seeing today. And that's what Yeshua was saying. When all these things are happening in the same hour, all these are the beginning of Israel's labor pains, the signs that are seen before she goes into labor, that is, the signs that are seen before the tribulation period begins. Yeshua goes on at verse 10, speaking of more signs that we've all been witnessing, telling us that many, will turn away from the faith. And remember, this English word we know is faith. It's an abstract term that adds to and takes away from the Father Yahweh's intended understanding in his word. What the Father said is more like many will turn away from being washed by and growing in Yahweh's word. And, living in that dreamland of darkness, they also express hatred toward others. And, full of deceptions and lies, they betray one another. Further, Yeshua warns us that there will be many false-hearted teachers and preachers of Yahweh's word who will mislead deceive, and swindle many. And we've sure seen plenty of those too. Now in verse 12, it seems to me that Yeshua is speaking of the tribulation period especially when he says that because of the increase of wickedness, the love of most people will grow cold. And I'm sure you'll agree that we are seeing the early stages of that already manifesting itself throughout society and in all forms of social media. And he continues saying that those who do continue being washed by and growing in Yahweh's word through the tribulation period will be saved. Also, we can see in verse 14 that the tribulation period is when the good news is preached throughout the whole world and then the end will come. We're going to close here, Chavarim, and next week we will pick up with verse 15 and take a close look at this thing called the abomination that causes desolation. Let's bow our hearts. Beloved Abba Father, we praise you and we thank you, Father, for our time with you this day in your word. Thanking you, Father, for the seeds that you are planting in each one of our hearts, causing them to take root and to flower in our lives, Abba, and in the lives of others. 
as we give this day, Abba, to you, Yeshua, and Ruach HaKodesh, praying in Yeshua's Kodesh name, Yahuwah, Yahuwah, our Elohim, Yahuwah Echad. And all the Kodeshim said, Amen. <laughs> That's our study for this week, my friends. Keep your wicks trimmed and keep your lamps burning bright. <laughs> Shalom, Chavarim. rather let it lie but the question still remains